Hey guys, I'm Joe with Grumbacher, and we're here today to talk about some string pull pour techniques. We've got a couple extra materials than our basic ones, which we go over in episode one. Uh, the materials that we have in addition to our basic materials today are the beads and a couple extra plastic cups. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is coat our canvas in our base color. Uh, we've already mixed all of our colors today. The colors that we're using today are all Grumbacher Academy Acrylics. We've got Mars Black, Titanium White, Process Magenta, Process Yellow, and Process Cyan. You can probably see a theme. So the first thing that we're gonna do is cover our canvas in that base coat. Like I said, we're gonna use a base coat of black today. Uh, so we're gonna get our canvas, which is, as I should show, taped and pinned, all prepped up. we show you how to do that in episode one. I'm gonna make sure that my colors are a good smooth mixture and give it a go over the canvas. So I'm just tilting it around to get it all covered. This is just our base color. So the next thing I'm gonna do is pour my colors out into some smaller plastic cups, which will give me a little bit more control when I'm laying them down on the beads and onto the canvas. So now that all my colors are in smaller cups and ready to be poured out onto the beads, I'm gonna make sure my beads are laid out nice and straight and flat, and I'm gonna drizzle the colors over the beads uh, in really any alternating pattern of my choice. Same goes for you, it's up to you. Get creative. All right, so now that we have our colors laid out over our strands of beads, we've made sure that one end is completely covered because that's gonna be the start of one of our dips. Uh, we're going to start transferring our beads onto our canvas. All right, so full disclosure, that was my first time ever doing a chain pull, and it goes to show, even when you barely know what you're doing as far as the technique goes, you can really get an awesome result in the end. Now it's time to move on to my bigger beads. I've got some party beads here that I'm gonna dip actually right into the same puddles that I had my last beads in. It's still pretty segmented enough where I think that I'll, I'll get the separation of color that I'm looking for. You can see I'm trying something a little different as far as how I'm laying the beads out onto the canvas. Uh, you may have seen some of these types of shapes in other videos. I have, that's what inspired me. I fully encourage you to do something completely unique and different. All right guys, I think I'm gonna stop right where I'm at. I know I have a lot of negative space left on the canvas, but I'm actually really liking the way that it looks right now. Uh, it's almost looking like a weird kind of alien plant of some kind, uh, at least from my angle. I'll flip it over for you when it's all dry and you'll be able to check out what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have come back uh, about two days later. Our paintings are completely dried and we have our finished results. Uh, as you can see, there wasn't a ton of color shifting during the drying process, and they look very similar to what they looked like right after we poured them, which I'm happy about because I really liked how they came out originally. Um, I think that, you know, as far as a first try on these two techniques, I'm very excited for the, the future prospects of what we could do with this. Uh, the bigger beads obviously give us a, a slightly different effect with uh, some uh, wider strands of the color and the chain beads give a very kind of finite, uh, nice swirling effect uh, depending on how you pull them off of the canvas. So I love how these came out and I'm excited to use these techniques in the future. Hope you guys uh, can comment below, tell me what you think of the video and send in some of your own attempts at this technique. Uh, until next time, I'm Joe with Grumbacher and thanks again for watching.